As you mentioned, we saw that other round between Penny Wong and, and Paul Keating. We saw the Foreign Minister's Press Club address a bit earlier this week. We know that in recent weeks, Paul Keating has been arguing that this plan to spend up to $368 billion on that fleet of nuclear-powered submarines via AUKUS is the worst deal in all history, in his words. Penny Wong argued the other day that, that the former PM's diminished himself over those comments. Where do you land on this? I mean, does the former PM make any valid points taking away the, the personal uh, attacks that we've seen along the way? Well, I, I, I think it's been largely unedifying by the, for the former Prime Minister. I think he has diminished himself by some of the comments that he's made in the personal attacks. I mean, he also made, you know, accusations at the press club that the entire public service were neoconservatives. I mean, this stuff is just simply not true. And I think on the AUKUS deal, look, I think we can have a rational, grown-up conversation about um, uh, spending that amount of money on a particular defence capability. The government's made it clear, and a lot of people, myself included, have supported that particular position. The argument really should be, is that the best investment for the Australian dollar into deterrence, or is there should be investment, say, in other capabilities? But I think what we need to do is move beyond this argument that we need to make that investment at all. Paul Keating's basically presented a position around China that is, is very reductionist in its approach. It basically says we would only need to worry about China if it directly attacked Australia, and that's simply not the case. And I think the foreign minister, in response um, on the press club, put out one of the best speeches by a foreign minister in a long time. She was very clear that Australian foreign policy and strategic policy is about averting war and maintaining the peace. It's about shaping the region. But most importantly, she said, it's also about avoiding a region that is closed, that is hierarchical, and where, she said, the rules are dictated by a single major power that suits its own interests. And what she said there without saying it is she's talking about China, that what we don't want is a closed hierarchical order in our region that's run and dominated by China. It's really clear that virtually all the other states in the region see this as the same thing. And what the Foreign Minister made really clear is what we need to do is reject this kind of G2 US China reductionist approach that um, Keating and others have taken to this particular issue. <clears throat> and think about it as a more broader strategic competition that's happening on in the region. And underpinning that is what she said the government has to do is contributing to the regional balance of power. That was very clear and very direct in her speech. In fact, this notion of a balance of power is in the title of the speech. And what they're really saying is that we have to have our diplomacy supported by military deterrence. If you want to be able to go out there and engage in the world, to agree with China on some things, to disagree where we must, and to maintain Australian sovereignty and support a region built on rules and laws where large countries don't determine the fate, as she said, of smaller countries, we need this backed up by significant military capability and levels of deterrence. And we've seen the massive modernisation of the Chinese military in the region over the last 20 years, some of the largest in human history, but it's not clear and it's not transparent and it's not being done openly. And it's been very prudent of both the former government and the current government to indicate investments in um, agreements such as AUKUS. And as we'll see by the look of it next week with the release, what looks like next week at the release of the Defence Strategic Update, what the government is going to do in the shorter term. AUKUS is a very long-term, multi-decade investment into deterrence and defence capabilities. In the shorter term, that's what the Defence Strategic Review is going to be about. And by the look of it, that should be released before the end of the month. OK, well, we'll hear more about that next week, no doubt about that. I did just want to ask you, when we look at capability and, and China's capabilities in particular, the Washington Post published uh, some of the leaked US military assessment and it's suggesting that the Chinese military could soon be deploying a high-altitude spy drone. The report suggested that it travels at least three times the speed of sound. How would something like that impact China's ability to conduct surveillance operations? Well, it would be a, a massive boost for the Chinese ability to conduct surveillance both around the region and more broadly. And hypersonics is one of those interesting areas. If you look at the AUKUS agreement, and we've been very focused on AUKUS around what they call Pillar 1, which is the nuclear submarine program. It's often overlooked that there is a Pillar 2 to AUKUS, 
and this is advanced military capabilities and there's nine areas listed in that particular grouping of which hypersonics is one. Now I would argue that hypersonics is listed in that particular area because as the reports are saying that the Chinese seem to largely have a lead over the Western powers, the United States, Australia, Japan, the United Kingdom and, and others in areas such as hypersonics. So this is an area that we have to play a bit of catch up in and this gives then the Chinese a capability overmatch in one particular area that we need to offset. So this is a really important area for investment. Surveillance and reconnaissance and intelligence is really key. And of course, this would be of great advantage to the Chinese if they were able, if they were able to, and I take that with a big if, if they were able to actually deploy this capability and make it used uh, effectively. But they've been doing lots of testing on hypersonic, both weapons and carriage systems. It's, it's unsurprising in many respects that this, uh, this news has come out because this is an area where the Chinese have been heavily investing in for decades now. Betty Dean, always appreciate your insights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here.